Hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Pierre Edward, uh, or you can just call me PE. Uh, I'm the partnerships manager at Recast, um, Recast.ai, and Recast is a bot platform specialized in customer support. Uh, and we have an open platform that provides the technology that we call natural language processing uh, to enable developers to build chatbots. So today I'm going to do a, um, a talk about what we call random access navigation. I'm going to explain to you what is random access navigation. It doesn't come from us. Uh, uh, and then I'm going to explain to you why it is interesting in, in the sense of building a bot and what are the fundamental differences uh, in, with the RAN uh, methodology. And then we're going to show you how to do that on Recast. Um, and, and then I'll, uh, we'll go through the code uh, on GitHub. The project is open source. Uh, so you guys can build your own uh, uh, own bot with the, the RAM methodology. Okay, so I'm just going to share the slides. Uh, it's it's going to be fa fairly short. Then we're going to move to the code and the platform really, really fast, actually. So first, um, what is random access navigation? Um, so random access navigation, uh, which is usually shortened for, with the RAN, so R I N. So it was first assessed by Shane Mack. So thanks, Shane. Uh, he's um, I think the CEO of Assist, Assist.ai, which is um, a platform building bots in the US. Uh, he wrote a very interesting post, and I'm completely inspiring from the, his post. So you you could actually check his Medium post. Um, so let's say um, let's say you want to watch a movie tonight, and this is what we're going to build today. So if you want to build a movie uh, using natural language processing, like the main thing would actually to build intents. Okay, so natural language processing use classification of intent in order to know where you are uh, and where you want to go. So the first thing is. Okay, what do, you, what do we need in order to build a bot that is going to look for a movie? So the first thing, probably the client is going to say hi. So we're going to have a greetings intent. And then we're probably going to need to know if it's a movie or a TV show, um, if we need the date, maybe a genre or a language. And then once we have all those informations, um, we're probably going to be able to, okay, go through a movie DB API uh, and look for uh, the movie or the shows that the client wants. So in terms of intents, uh, this would be designed as greetings, getting the type. Is it a movie or is it a film or, uh, sorry, or a TV show? Then do we have the date? Then do we have the genre? And then do we have the language? So the flow will probably look like this, what you're seeing here uh, on the screen. Uh, so it would be very linear uh, and it would force the user to answer a question after another, which could be very, very painful, okay? Uh, so like if you say, I'd like to find a romance movie, uh, then you have the genre or the, and the type so what do you do? Uh, or if someone say, can you get me science fiction movies released in this date? Uh, then we have more information. And is it an intent? Do we have intent? Do we need intents? So you probably understand what I'm uh, actually trying to say here is um, what we actually need the bot to understand in that it is not intense, um, is it's entities, okay? So we have a different paradigm here. It's not we do not need a flow-based intent, uh, but more a flow entity-based, okay? So the way, uh, the way it's gonna work is we're actually gonna build, oh, sorry, that's, okay, that's fine. So we're, probably, we're actually gonna have to build our entity saying we need a genre, we need a movie entity, we need a TV entity, and then we need obviously a language entity. So language is already something that we understood, uh, understand on Recast. So you don't need to build this one. And then what we're going to say is in order to finish the flow, we're going to need that many entities. And you're just checking if you do have all the entities you need or in order to make a request or if you're missing some. Okay. So what it's going to look like is instead of having 
that many intents, like I showed you on the first slide, we're just going to have one intent. So instead of having like uh, many intents, we're just going to have one. Okay. So the first, uh, we're just going to have one intent that actually I call discovery. And so in this discovery intent, we're going to put expressions that express the intent, but in many ways. So we're going to have some sentences that are going to give give us the four entities and some other intents that uh, some other expression that are just going to be give us one or two or three so like we could say uk fantasy shows in the 90s or any japanese drama tv shows or my girlfriend wants to watch a crime us movie that was released last year any id so we're just giving the um, uh, the intent some way of expressing i'm looking for a movie even if I don't have all the entities, okay? Because what's going to what's going to happen is maybe I'm going to say I want to watch English movies, and then the bot is going to say, okay, sure, but I'm missing some entities, so I'm just going to ask for the first one I'm missing, and then the person is going to say, oh, sure, I want to see drama English movies, and then we're going to fall back into this intent, and the only thing that the bot is going to do is, am I missing some entities in order to be able to make a request? Okay, so now that we have this uh, on recast, we have, I'm going to go through this in live, so don't worry. Um, we actually have what we call a bot builder. Uh, and the bot in, within the bot builder, you can build what we call actions. And so this is our discovery action. And in order to validate our discovery action, we need, uh, our bot needs to know a genre, a movie, or a TV. And then nationality, language, or location as a, uh, I want, I want it to be very open regarding what people could say to the bots. And then we're going to have a date in order to make sure that uh, maybe we know that the person wanted to look for a film that was last year or two years ago. And once we have that, so this is uh, our one intent in random access navigation mode. Okay. So once we have this, uh, then we do not have any flow. Uh, as you can see on the picture right now, we just have the discovery intent at the top left, and that's it. We do not have anything else, okay? All the other intents that we have on this builder are just small talk intents, okay? Just in order to understand the user saying other things. But we do not have any flow-based in, uh, flow intents. We have a, just one intent, one action that is going to require some entities in order to validate everything. Okay, so now I'm just going to like go through the whole process with you so we can like build this bot all together uh, if you want to do it live. Uh, and I think it's probably going to take us like 15 to 20 minutes maximum. And then we can actually uh, like have uh, any questions if you would like to. Okay, so if you go on the recast, so I can, you can just uh, go on the recast website and log in. And on the recast website, then you can go on the recast dash AI slash movie dash bot. Okay. So you actually, you're, you're going to, okay. So that's not this one, actually. Okay, we're we're going to go on my, okay. Sorry. Where is this one? Should be, movie, should be this one. No, it's not this one. Okay. I'm very sorry. We're going to go to another one. Uh, I'm log in. Okay. So if you go on, sorry, on my account, so it's uh, slash PE, um, then you can actually find movie debot here. So the, um, the URL is uh, PE and then movie debot. Okay. I was pretty sure we had this on the... Okay, sorry. So actually, three cast... Sorry, I'm pretty sorry for this mistake. Dash AI uh, slash movie debugs and slash right. It will go to my PT there. So once you have that, uh, we actually within the bot, so I build all those intents. Um, and so you can actually fork the bot in order to use it on your account if you want to do that. So I'm just going to concentrate on the discover intent uh, which I built, okay? So on this discover intent... Uh, you, as you can see, uh, we have all of our expressions that express this intent. And all in all this uh, exp uh, expression, we have our entities. So that was actually a, 
a, a, a sentence that was sent through Facebook Messenger from a client. Um, so in in all those expressions, now we need to tag uh, each entity that are very interesting to us. So some entities are already tagged by Rika. So uh, as you can see, those are the gold, what we call gold entities, the entities with the black stars here. So the, the ones that, that are already tagged for us are, are daytime, languages, locations, and nationalities. Okay, the rest you're going to have to tag it. So the only three that you have to tag are what we call so genre, movie, and TV show, okay? So if you want to tag an entity, if you fork the bot, you don't have to do that. But if you want to tag it, if you want to build it yourself, you just have to highlight the word and then say, okay, grammar is a genre, and then you're going to tag the genre, okay? So what's happening is when you want to test it, now it's say, I'd like to uh, watch a um, grammar movie in English uh, that was... Um, Released in 2014, uh, then Recast is going to say the intent is discover, obviously, and then this is the different entities that we have. You have the JSON view over there. Uh, again, intent, we give you the confidence here. Uh, then we have um, all the entities. So those, the ones that are of interest for us are the genre, obviously. Again, with the confidence, if it's a movie or a TV show, here it's a movie. The language, we give you the short and the long. And then the daytime, we're going to use the ESO format here in order to make the requests. Okay? So once we, we do have that, um, at the bottom of the bot here, you can see that we have what we call uh, gazettes. So gazettes are uh, like dictionary of entities. Um, so it's in, in order to use that uh, like smartly, um, we're going to just input all of the genre uh, that our API is going to understand. So this is why I actually we're going to use the uh, the movie DB API. Uh, so on the movie DB API, I just like copy pasted all of the genre that their API understood and pasted there in order to make the platform understand quicker what is the genre. Okay, that's just a way to do that much faster. Now, if we go in the builder, uh, as you can see, uh, we just have, so we have a lot of intents here, but the one, uh, the one that is of interest for us is the one I actually showed you on the slide here. So it's just, we have the genre, we need a movie or TV, we have nationality or language or location, and we have, oh, we have daytime or interval, actually. Uh, so if you want to add an ocean, you just click here, and then you're going to say, we need a daytime, sorry. And then we're going to do an alias here, and then that's it, okay? And in the bot replies, uh, we actually do not have any reply, as the replies are going to be uh, override by the bot, okay? So there's no reply here. The replies are going to be within the code uh, that we're going to um, go through a bit later. So once you have your bot, um, you build your intent, you plugged it to the bot builder here, you put your notions uh, and everything. Now we need to on Messenger, putting your um, uh, redirect URL. The demo is in Node.js. Uh, I hope everyone is very familiar with it. Uh, nonetheless, it should be fairly simple if you have some coding experience. Uh, so we're just using Express to mount a server, and uh, basically that's it. Uh, that's how we're running the server. The server is going to call what uh, we call our bot.js, and so our bot.js is going to make the request to recast, basically, and is going to connect to the bot connector to handle the message. Once uh, the message is received, then we're going to send the message to our converse um, root, uh, which is the root of the bot builder. The root for uh, just the training is a bit different. It's just slash requests. And then we're going to put our conversation token, uh, and you can put the language, but here we, we didn't do that. Once we have that, then we're going to call our movie API. And this is where, let's say, the magic happens. Okay, so our movie API is made of... Uh, so it's, no, sorry, it's actually here, yeah, messages, sorry. Uh, so messages API. So um, message, as I said, we make the, uh, the request to recast with the slash converse in order to get the answer from the bot builder. So basically it's just going to say, do we have all the entities? 
So once we have that, we're just gonna check if this action is done. And if not, we're gonna check if the action slug is discovered. And we're gonna check if we have all um, the entities. So once we have that, we're gonna say start search flow. So I'm gonna show you this. The start search flow is here, okay? So as you can see, we're gonna get from the uh, recast API all the entities that we care. So is it, do we have a movie? Do we have a TV? Do we have a genre, a date, an interval, a nationality or a language, okay? Once we have that, we're gonna check if we do not have no TV or no movie. And then we're gonna ask the client or the customer, do you wanna watch a movie or a TV show? And this is just buttons in order to have quick replies in order to help the client to like go faster. Same thing for genre. We're just gonna check if we have a genre and then if not, very simple, we're just gonna ask for a genre and we're inputting 12 genre, uh, 11, sorry, I think there's 11 max quick replies on Messenger um, in order to help the customer to choose a genre, okay? Same thing. And then we're gonna continue. Same thing for date and interval. So um, we have, uh, if we do not have a date, neither uh, date interval, we're gonna same bill quick replies in order to ask for a range in time and same thing for nationality and language, okay? So this is very, very simple, but what it does, um, so I can explain a bit more about the benefits of the bot here, is actually the bot never, never say, uh, I do not understand, okay? Because the bot needs to have X entities in order to make a request. If the bot doesn't have this uh, many entities, then the bot is just gonna ask you to uh, give uh, the bot the missing entities, okay? So in, in terms of UX of conversation, this is very, very interesting because we, you never have a bot saying, I'm sorry, I do not understand, uh, but you're just having a bot with a very simple and focus, uh, which is I I'm looking for a movie in order to do that. I need this, this, and this. And as long as the client is not giving me those information, I'm just gonna continue and ask him those informations, okay? So obviously this, uh, like in a production environment for uh, companies, uh, you will probably need to say if the bot is asking three times for the same information and not understanding, you'll probably redirect to a customer support. Uh, but this is just an example. Um, again, it's really interesting in terms of UX, uh, not having a bot uh, saying, I, not, I, I don't understand. So once we have all this information, uh, we're gonna match um, the ISO code, the year, uh, the date interval, the movie and the genre uh, with something that is actually uh, readable by the API. So I'm not just gonna go through the code. You can actually read that, it's fairly uh, obvious. And once we have that, we can actually uh, do the uh, start searching. So I'm gonna go back here. Um, so just to explain why we have other things here. Um, what, when we build the bot and we put it in production, we actually notice that some people do not want to uh, like say all the four information in order to make a request. So a lot of people were actually saying, uh, I don't care. Uh, so um, what we said is, if this, um, if uh, the the we have an intent saying anything, so like anything, I don't care, whatever, uh, please do the search or that, those kind of requests. If a client is actually saying that, then we will uh, make a request with the information we gathered previously. And if we do not have any information, uh, then we're just going to select a random uh, movie in order to get the, the client something. Um, what um, if the uh, uh, the person is saying like such as, uh, then we have a different uh, uh, a different route uh, to find the movie like such as Harry Potter, for example. We had those requests a lot or uh, movies similar to. And then what we're saying is uh, from if the client is saying greetings or uh, as I'm, I want to start again, then we're going to reset the whole memory in order to wipe out the memory of the bot builder. Uh, so we can start again. And those are just uh, merely just uh, small talk intents where we wanted to play with GIFs, okay? So nothing too fancy here. Uh, so I'm gonna just go back to the um, movie API uh, just to show you. 
So it's very simple. We are using so the moviedb.org, great website uh, with a fairly very nice API if you want to use it. Uh, you just have to send an email and then they'll send you a token in order to make some requests. Um, and so we have the Discover movie and the Discover TV. It almost worked the same way, uh, just the route is different and the your ID are a bit different, uh, which can be annoying, but this is why we have two different methods here. Um, so we're making the request and then we have a function for the find movie similar to another one. Um, and, and that's it, basically. Those are recommendations uh, that we do not use here. And then we have the API to Carousel uh, in order to structure all the movies we gathered in order to display it in a uh, fancy Carousel. Uh, so you can actually test about um, on Messenger. I think it's Messenger's like uh, slash, I think it's slash T slash movie D bot here. Okay. For everyone who wants to have the GitHub page, you can just go to, uh, I, I didn't even uh, say that, sorry. So it's uh, P-L-I-E uh, slash movie, but I'm gonna copy paste the link for you. Um, we also had the whole article where I explain everything on our blog on Recast. So it's blog.recast.ai. I think if you type, type uh, on, on Google, like random access navigation, Recast, you should find the article right away with everything. Um, where we go through the whole thing I just showed you. And I'm just going to copy paste this. And now if you have any questions, I think I'd be happy to answer them. So I'm going to, okay, I'm going to share the link to post two here. So you have everything. And this is, up. and this is the, um, the link on the recast uh, account. If you want to fork the button, then build uh, on top of it. Um, so I guess that's it for uh, the demo. You have every single resources needed in order to build the bots. Uh, now, if you have any question, I'd be happy to answer them. I'm just going to scroll back up. Uh, so Taha, so Chen, we do have Turkish, I think. No, we have Turkish. Okay. So you can actually you can actually build the bot in, in Turkish if you want to. Uh, so, Max, how do you observe and study social interactions? Um, so that's a very good question. I'm not, I'm not sure there's like the, a very good generic answer I can give you. Um, I guess it really depends on the, um, on the use case. Um, there's many ways of measuring if the bot is going well uh, and like if your users are actually using it. The first thing is um, um, you could actually say, do people actually finish a conversation uh, uh, and like seems to be happy about it? Um, happy is usually they would say, great, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. You're great. You're awesome. Uh, that kind of thing. You can actually use uh, a building your NPS. So it's net promoter score um, by um, once you're displaying the, um, uh, the cards with the movies, uh, you can actually say, um, did you like it? Something like this with just a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down uh, in order to make sure like people are happy with what you are uh, proposing them. Um, and then um, you can actually just watch like what are the intent that are called. I can actually show you this. Uh, so th that is interesting actually. Okay. So on the monitor here, you actually have uh, all the usage metrics here. So in usage matrix, you can actually see uh, how many expressions uh, do you have. Uh, so as you can see here, our intent usage uh, is way more used as greetings, which is a very good sign of the bot being used very well, as people are spending more time in our main use case as in greetings, okay? So this is a very good signal here. Um, uh, we did not put uh, any NPS or that kind of thing, but we're mainly using this uh, in order to make sure that it's working very well. Uh, hi, Erin. Uh, so what if you change your mind about something, uh, for instance, your can the ball handle that? Okay, uh, so very good question. Actually, uh, Recast will handle this uh, on its own. Um, so uh, if you remember um, uh, in the bot builder, we had this action, discover where we put it all of our notions here. 
Um, and so um, in this notion, if you, if you say like, I want to watch a drama movie and then you say, oh, sorry, I want to watch a romance movie instead, then it's going to override the previous notion that you if put it uh, in, the, um, in the builder. So you actually within your card, you're not going to do anything. Recast is just going to shoot, uh, send you the most updated notion. If you want to, if you want to uh, do this in your code, um, then you would have to. You you would need a database, uh, and then uh, erase within the database store every value. So uh, so before it calls the movie again. Yeah, sure. So I, actually, the thing is, uh, the flow is you have messenger. Messenger received the message. The message is going to be sent to the bot. And then the bot is going to send the message to recast in order to have the natural language processing. So within this, the recast is going to send you back a JSON with all the information, with all the, the genre and everything. So um, you're actually going to er like erase the genre because recast is going to take care of updating the genre with the last value. Okay. Does it, does it make sense? I'm, I'm just... Uh, Okay, good. <laughs> uh, can you speak to the value recast or first uh, other? Okay, uh, yeah, sure. Very, very good question. Um, so um, in the, um, let's say, open platform NLP space, um, I see there's, let's say, five players if we count recast in. Um, so first one would probably be api.ai. Uh, then you would have wit.ai, uh, you have Lewis uh, from Microsoft and Watson, okay, from IBM. So I guess in terms of pure technology, um, uh, so we have those uh, 30 entities that are um, noticed by default on the platform, uh, like uh, daytime, language, uh, location, uh, which let's say drastically reduce the time to market to build a bot because you don't have to do the parsing yourself. Uh, also, we enrich those entities as I showed you with the daytime earlier. Uh, we just do not say uh, tomorrow or last year is a date. We say, this is a date, this is the ISO format, uh, this is you know, the formatted daytime and everything. Um, so again, this is really in the mindset of helping the developers to, you know, uh, develop faster and focus on what is very interesting for them within the code of the bot and not, you know, parsing. Um, that, I think that is really one of the best options that we have on Recast compared to other, others. Uh, the other one would be, uh, I think we're the only one to provide uh, bots that are multilingual on the platform. Um, so you can actually have one tab per language and then your bot will speak, will be multilingual. Uh, the JSON won't change, uh, just the language uh, on the JSON would change, but like the same entities and everything would be the same. So it's really, really scalable. Um, I, I think those are, let's say, the main two options. Uh, we have the gazettes, we have the bot builder, uh, we have a bot connector built within, uh, which not all the platforms have. Uh, but those would be, I guess, our main uh, values regarding the others. Dr. Watamwar, uh, do you have any example of bots helping in creative developments? I'm not sure I have in creative developments. Um, so that could be a new use case. I w I'm, I've never seen this, uh, so I, I won't be able to say. I've just, I, mainly, I'm just, I'm just in bots like helping teams to do a better job or make sure uh, they monitor everything and everything goes well, but not, not in a creative development. So any, any other questions uh, on the use cases on the platform? Um, I can actually say something to you. This is a bit early. Uh, well, my team uh, won't kill me. Uh, we're going to release another bot builder uh, next week. Uh, which is going to be way, way different than this one, uh, and which is going to be actually really helpful if you want to build uh, random access navigation uh, methods. Um, so uh, it's the, the new build builder is going to be called Skills, and it's going to be way more open for you to build uh, such bots uh, on Recast. Uh, so I hope you'll like it. I think we're going to release it um, Wednesday or Friday next week.
so stay in touch. Uh, it's going to, it's really going to be really helpful. Plus you're going to be able to build cards and everything uh, right uh, within the bot builder with an LP. So without uh, out any preference or experience with JavaScript frameworks, Angular versus React versus Vue. Um, so I'm, I'm not a specialist of uh, JavaScript framework. At FreeCast, we're using React uh, versus Angular 1. We were, we were using Angular 1 at first, and we changed. Um, from Angular 1 to React is not the best comparison. I, I'm, I'm not very familiar with Angular 2, and I don't know you that much, but React was like a huge uh, improvement, like really, really faster. Um, and and it, we're really happy with React as of right now. Um, so in terms of time, if one starts developing a bot as customer support, how much time does it would take to develop a fully functional bot? Um, so that is very, very uh, interesting question. Uh, at Recast, when we're building, so we're building bot for customer support for clients uh, in, in mainly in Europe, a bit in North America and in Asia. Um, our projects are two months uh, from kickoff to put in production. Um, so we split the methodology in three phases. The first phase, uh, maybe I can actually show you a slide. I'm not sure I have it. So the first, um, the first uh, stage phase is actually what we call design. Um, so it usually takes two weeks. Um, it's um, four workshops. The first one is what is the business objective of having a bot? Um, I'm not sure people think a lot about this, uh, but are trendy, are sexy, uh, but we need to think about the business objective. Then we have a workshop about um, what are the what is the use case, what are the flow. Uh, we have a third uh, workshop about what we call UAT, so user acceptance testing. Uh, those are different type of conversations the bot are, is going, is going uh, to have with the client in order to make sure we build the correct bots. And fourth uh, workshop is um, technical requirements. So where do we plug the bot to the IT, uh, to any APIs? Um, do I have all the documentation and everything? Then we're moving on to phase two, which is development. Uh, usually one project manager and one developer um, working with the business teams and technical teams of the clients. And then the, that usually lasts one month. And then we have two, three weeks uh, to put the bot in production. We have one week to execute the UAT and test and train the bot with the client um, and, and clients uh, if you're building a B2C. Uh, and then we we'll usually do a workshop to like um, knowledge transfer with the client in order to make sure it's not a black box for them. And then we put the bot in production. So usually two weeks, one month and two, three weeks. So that between eight and 10 weeks uh, in total to build a bot. That's our methodology internally. So if you want to have more information, just send me an email. I'll be happy to answer all of you. Uh, if you have questions about the, the presentation or, or recast or else, um, I can actually send you the project methodology uh, and all the articles we have about it. Be happy to. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, again, you have uh, everything. I'll send uh, to uh, uh, AI with the best of the slides, so you have it. Um, but uh, again, you have the article and everything I showed you on the chat. You can follow it. The code is open source. Uh, you have my email if you have any questions. So really feel free. I'd be really happy to answer to answer any questions you would have. So uh, have a great day uh, and uh, have a great uh, end uh, AI with the best uh, uh, weekend. Thanks. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.